Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today we are diving into one of the most exciting new features in C Sharp 13 and .NET 9, the field keyword. Now we could say goodbye to manually managing backing fields and hello to cleaner, more efficient code. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Master C Sharp 13, the new field keyword. So what exactly is the field keyword? Simply put, the field keyword is a new contextual keyword in C Sharp 13 that allows us to reference a compiler generated backing field directly in our property accessors. This means we no longer have to manually declare a private field to store our property value. Instead, the compiler does it for us and we just use field keyword in our getters and setters. Okay, so let's review the examples shown over here how we used to write property with custom logic before C sharp 13. That's what I have written before C sharp 13 with backing field say underscore value. Okay, so here there is a public class named example. Here public means other classes can access it, right? So inside this class, there is a private integer field named underscore value that will store the actual value. It is labeled as a backing field because it holds the data for the public property value. Next, there is a public property named value of type of int, right? That's what I have written public int value. And we know that properties allows control access to the class data, right? And this property, we have the getter and setters. What getter does? The getter retrieves the current value of underscore value when value is accessed. That's what I have written, get goes to underscore value. So getter uses the backing field. Next, we have the setter. What setter does? The setter allows assigning a new value to the property. It includes custom logic that checks if, if the new value, that is the value actually, is greater than or equal to zero. If this condition is met, underscore value is going to update with the new value. If not, this assignment is ignored. Effectively, what we are doing over here, we are preventing negative values from being set, right? So overall, this example class encapsulates an integer value that is underscore value through the property value, which provides controlled access. And the setter enforces that only non-negative values can be assigned to underscore value. So this pattern is useful for data validation and encapsulation in object-oriented programming. So if you have noticed, the underscore value field is required to store the properties data, right? It's not a lot of code, but wouldn't be nice if the compiler could handle that for you, that's where the field keyword comes in. Okay, so now in C sharp 13 without backing field, now directly references the compiler generated backing field denoted by field keyword. So with C sharp 13, we can replace the manual backing field with the field keyword. So let me show you how the same example looks now. So here again, there is a public class named example. And if you notice, I have not explicitly mentioned backing field over here. I have directly started with public properties named value of in data type. And here in this property, we have the getter and setter, right? Instead of explicitly backing field over here, I have used this field keyword, which is compiler generated field. So here I have written get goes to field. And in the setter, what we are doing, we are checking if value is greater than equal to zero, then I'm using compiler generated field to assign the value over here. That's what I have written field equal to value. Okay, so that's it. So here, no explicit underscore value field, no extra boilerplate, just a clean, simple property definition. And the compiler takes care of creating the backing field behind the scenes. Why use the field keyword? So why is this feature a game changer? Here are three specific reasons. Number one, less repetitive or unnecessary code. So now your classes are cleaner and easier to read. Focus on logic. Now you can focus on the custom behavior of your properties without worrying about implementation details. Consistency. It's a standardized way to handle the backing fields, reducing chances of error. Now keep in mind, the field keyword is part of C Sharp 13 preview. To use it, what we need to do, we will have to enable the preview feature by setting our language version to preview in our project file. So keep these things in mind whenever we are going to use field keyword as of now. Okay, let's see the real world example. So here, imagine you are building an account class where the balance property must always be non-negative. So how we are going to do that? So here, we are going to use this field keyword. So that's what I have written public class named account and here we have this balance public property of decimal data type, right? And here we have the getter and setter. In getter and setter, both places we are using this compiler generated backing field, which is nothing but the field keyword over here. So get goes to field, set, you're checking 
if value is greater than equal to zero then i am setting the backing field which is nothing but filled over here so field is equal to value overall this makes our code clean concise and easy to maintain right okay let's switch to the visual studio and see all these things in action all right so here we are in visual studio imagine you have a bank account and you want to store its balance safely you don't want to allow negative balances because that doesn't make sense for your account you need a way to enforce this rule how we can do that we can do so with the help of property with custom logic in this demo what i'm going to do i'm going to show you how we can do before c sharp 13 with explicitly backing field and with c sharp 13 without explicitly backing field to show the demo what i have done i have created one console application named new field keyword demo that has program.cs file in program.cs file first of all i have added necessary namespace like using system then there is a namespace named new field keyword demo under that we have three classes account before c 13 account after c 13 and program class let's review one by one before c 13 you would explicitly create a hidden box called a backing field to store the balance when someone asks for the balance then using a getter you open a box and show it when someone wants to change the balance using a setter you check it if it's valid that means non-negative before putting the new value into the box. That's why in account before C sharp 13 class, what I have done, I have a private integer field named underscore balance, which is nothing but a hidden box that will store the actual value. Then we have a public property named balance of decimal data type, right? We have getter and setter inside that. So when we ask for the balance, the getter retrieves from the underscore balance field. That's what I have written get goes to underscore balance. Whereas setter, it helps us to set the balance if it's valid value. That means it should be positive before updating underscore balance field. That's how it prevents negative values being set. That's what I have written first in this set block. What I have done, if value is greater than equal to zero, then underscore balance is equal to value. So only positive value is going to get stored underscore balance field, right? So this is a manual process. We have to write the code. That's what I have written here, explicitly backing field, right? Private decimal underscore balance to create and manage the hidden box, which is nothing but the backing field over here. In C sharp 13, the compiler simplifies this for us. How? We don't need to manually create a hidden box anymore. Instead, compiler automatically makes one for us. The special keyword field refers to this automatically generated box. That's why in this account of C sub 13 class, we have not explicitly mentioned backing field altogether, right? We have started directly from this public property named balance of decimal data type and we have the getter and setter. Instead of backing field, we have used compiler generated backing field which is denoted by filled keyword over here that's what i have written get goes to filled and in set also we have used filled keyword if value is greater than equal to zero then value is going to get stored into this backing field which is compiler generated so that's what i have written field is equal to value so here we don't need to create a backing field explicitly instead we will be relying on the compiler generated backing field which is denoted by the filled keyword altogether then finally we have a class named program that has main method which is an entry point of this application so here first of all what i have done i have printed this statement into console window new field keyword demo of c sharp 13 that is going to get printed into console window with the help of console dot right line statement then what i'm going to do i'm just showing you both before c sharp 13 how we use to write property with explicitly backing field and with c sharp 13 and dot net 9 without explicitly backing field we will be using the field keyword right so if you see these examples using explicit backing field before she of 13, what I have done, I'm just printing this statement into console window before she of 13. And then what I have done, I am creating an instance of this account before she of 13 class. That's what I have written account before she of 13 account old is equal to new account before she of 13. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to assign balance value to the underscore balance field. and how we can do so we can use this setter method of this property that's what i have written account old dot balance is equal to 100 here i am setting the value of 100 over here and whatever the value i have set i'm just going to print into console window that's what i have written balance valid account old dot balance why i'm saying valid over here because 100 is a positive integer value right and that's what it is going to hold this 100 value into this underscore balance field right 
and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set it again with the invalid value, but it is not going to accept it. So I'm just trying to set minus 50 over here because this is a negative value. So it is not going to get stored into this underscore balance field with the help of setter method because we have logic over here, right? This logic, if value is greater than equal to zero, then only the value is going to set over here, right? So that's why this minus 50 is not going to set it over here. And then finally, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to see whether that value has been set in this underscore balance field or not. How we are going to check that we are going to retrieve the value with the help of getter. That's what I have written account old dot balance. So here I'm just invoking the getter method of this property and we'll be seeing how much value we have currently in our underscore balance field, right? So that's how we used to write properties with explicitly backing field before C sharp 13. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show how we are going to use the field keyword, which is introduced in C sharp 13 and .NET 9. So here again, what I'm doing, I'm just printing this statement into console window with C sharp 13. And here I have initialized account after C sharp 13 class. That's what I have written account after C sharp 13 account new is equal to new account after C sharp 13. And here again, I'm just assigning this balance to 100. How I'm going to set it with the help of setter. That's all. I have written account new dot balance is equal to 100. 100 is a positive value. So it's it is going to get set it right. Then what I'm doing, I'm just printing this set value, how much value we have currently in the balance field, how we can do so with the help of account new dot balance. I'm just retrieving it. And then again, I'm just trying to set the invalid value. Why I'm saying the invalid value? Because I'm setting minus 50 over here. Minus 50 is not a positive number. It's a negative number. It should ideally should not get saved into this balance field order. Together, right so how we are going to check it that's why we have written this getter method of properties that we have in this account after c sharp 13 class which is nothing but this one decimal balance so this value is going to get retrieved with the help of this getter right with the help of field keyword here field is nothing but representing the compiler generated backing field right so that's how this program is structured let me go and execute this program and show this output to you okay so output got appear into this console window if you see the first statement got printed new field keyword demo of shisha 13 because i have written console dot right line statement and printed this statement with the help of that statement itself okay then before shisha 13 balance valid is equal to 100 and after that i have tried to set the value of minus 50 but it is not going to get considered that's why I'm seeing after invalid set also, I'm receiving this 100 value. Similarly, with C sharp 13, balance valid got printed 100 and balance after invalid set got 100 only because there is a check, right? That if value that we are trying to set it, it is not a positive value, then it is not going to get considered. It will be ignored. That's why this balance after invalid set also, I'm going to get this 100 value that's how we got this 100 right okay so that brings me to end of my session today to sum up today we learned about the new field keyword introduced in c sharp 13 it's a simple yet powerful feature that makes managing properties in your code much easier that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video